Today, we're learning about the CC glue gun effect and how we can use it to create this cool social media video. Now, you can find the CC glue gun effect under the generate category in the effects and presets panel. Once you apply this effect to your layer, the layer disappears and that's because this effect generates on top of what you apply it to. For the sake of this video that we're making, we're going to create a new adjustment layer and apply the CC glue gun effect on that adjustment layer and not on the actual image itself. So guys, basically, the CC glue gun effect creates this kind of thick 3D liquid fluid, something like hot glue from a glue gun, hence the name CC glue gun effect. As you can see, everything is dark, but once you zoom in, you'll see a tiny part of the image still showing. If we set a keyframe for the brush button and then go forward in time and move it, you can see that a line is drawn based on the colors of the image layer beneath this adjustment layer. We can repeat this process to create a basic path animation. Let's go over effect controls and see how this effect actually works. Increasing the stroke width value will slowly reveal the warped image layer and increasing and reducing the density value will determine how textured that you want the path animation to be. We'll talk more about that later. All right guys, don't mind me. I'm here on my computer about to go over to Envato Elements and download some of my favorite templates. The thing about templates is templates should not look like templates. Splitter is a text template that literally looks like it was made in camera or made by the best VFX artist in the world. Look at this, look at this beautiful shimmer. It looks real, it looks tangible, it looks it looks freaking amazing. It looks real. I'm going to download that later, but now let's go over to this next template called Bubbly Foam Titles. Does that look like a template to you or does that look like a real in-camera effect? But guess what? You can literally change this text to whatever you want because this is a template. Next template here. Beautiful cinematic titles. These would have taken literally days to make. You know, the crazy thing is by the end of the day, I'm probably going to be downloading about a thousand dollars worth of templates and I only paid nine dollars for this. Look at this next template, Cinema Trailer Titles. This is perfect. Let's make sure we download these. Guys, check out this lower thirds pack that I'm about to download. This is literally one of my favorite lower thirds packs to download on Elements. Let's download this one. These stickers look like they're 3D, but they're not. They're so easy to use and all the words are editable. Guys, look at this incredible pack called eProsm. Our team actually made this and it is available on Elements. There's so many things to download off of Elements. It's only $9 for your first month and you can literally get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands and thousands worth of incredible video assets. Guys, click the link in the description to take advantage of our $9 deal now. Next is time span. This is referring to the trim path of this effect. If it is set to zero, it's going to just draw the line out and the line will always stay there. But as soon as you increase the time span, the line will now have a lifespan, making it disappear after it's been revealed. Next, we have reflection. This controls how distorted the reflection is. Increasing this basically distorts the reflection more. And when you turn it down to zero, you have no distortion at all, turning this into something like a mat revealing what's behind it. Next up is strength which kind of acts like the stroke width, but in a more aggressive manner. And next is the style menu. And under the style menu is the paint style. There are two paint styles, the plain and the wobbly. If we change the paint style to wobbly, it randomizes the positioning of the blobs, giving it this turbulent displacement look. You can play around with the wobble height, width and animation speed to get some crazy results. Moving on to the lights, you can light this glue gun effect using the effect light or the native AE light. Using the effect light, you can increase or decrease the light intensity, change the color of the light, and change the type of light. Talking about types of light, we have the distant light and the point light. The distant light is just like the sun, a far away directional light source. When the light type is set to distant light, you can change the light height and the light direction. Secondly, we have the point light, which is like a light bulb. The point light gives you a point control that you can move around to control the position of the light. And you can control everything except the light direction when using the point light. Now you can go back up and change the light that you're using to AE lights if you really want to make use of the native After Effects lights to light this effect. Finally, we have shading, which controls how the effect material interacts with the light. You can adjust the roughness, specular, ambient, and many more. And also please note that these properties that we just learned are all keyframable. Now let's incorporate this effect in our social media video. Now it's time to create the hero edit. 
First and foremost, let's delete all the keyframes we created in the beginning and reset the glue gun effect. Next, we're going to create a new null layer and pick whip the glue gun brush to the null layer position. We are doing this because the null object as our brush position control enables us to shape the motion path and to be much more precise when we're creating the path animation. Next, you wanna move your playhead to the beginning of the timeline and move the null object to the top corner, a little out of frame, and now set a keyframe for the null object position. After that, move a little bit forward in time and bring the null object in. Now, continue to move forward in time while repositioning the null object and start creating the path animation of your choice. Don't forget to play around with the motion path and the keyframe positions till you get something that you're actually happy with. Now that we have our animation, let's increase the glue gun stroke width to 21. Leave density to 25. Set the time span to 0.7. Reflection at 50. And strength at 72. Feel free to play around with these values till you get a result that you're happy with. Now we want to make our image layer itself visible. To do this, we'll add the CC composite effect to the adjustment layer and change the transfer mode to behind. And then uncheck RGB only. Now we can see the glue gun effect animating over our image. Now guys, to spice this up, let's actually make the glue gun effect animate behind our subject, which is this lady in black. To do this, duplicate the image and rename the top layer to Roto. Now using the Roto brush tool, mask out the lady. Now this is a very important step to lock in your Roto, so listen closely. Make sure you don't move your playhead and then pre-compose the Roto layer. When pre-composing, set it to move all attributes to the new composition and click OK. And finally, freeze frame the pre-comp. Doing this will lock in your rotoscope without you having to wait for After Effects to freeze the rotoscope for the entire timeline duration. Now, move the Roto Brush Comp above the adjustment layer, and when you play back, the animation should animate behind our subject. The only thing right now is that we actually want this to happen at a certain point, so we're going to keyframe the opacity of the Roto Comp. So, we will move our playhead to the point where we want this effect to kick in, and then create a keyframe for opacity, setting it to zero, and then we'll move forward a bit and set the opacity to 100. Go ahead and play around with the glue gun motion path in relation to the rotoscope effect. Now to finish up this edit, we wanna add our text underneath the glue gun adjustment layer and then create another adjustment layer, which we will name camera movements and drag it above every other layer in the timeline. Then we will add the transform effect to it. Now move your playhead to the beginning of the timeline and set a keyframe for scale. Set scale to something like 145 and then move the playhead to the end of the timeline and set scale back to 100. When you play back, you should have a basic zoom out camera movement. Thanks for watching.